What's up guys, Marissa here at Wilkins. Uh, we're doing a stage two on this uh, Road Glide Special. Um, so we're just cleaning it out, got everything ripped apart here. Um, just got my old cam bearing out. Uh, so we're just giving a quick rinse before we install our new parts here. My new Screaming Eagle cam bearing. A little bit of assembly lube on there so that way it um, goes in a little easier. Cam bearing install tool. Kind of watch it as I'm going in, make sure everything's going in there straight. Go until about flush. I'm going to pull the tool out so I can measure how deep it is. If you go in too deep and then you have to pull the bearing back out, you have to replace the bearing. So that's why we just keep checking before we go in too deep. We got a little ways to go. So we got new lifters for this. So we're gonna bleed our lifters with some fresh oil. I put them in here. We're gonna uh, put our, actually our brake bleeder on there. And we're gonna suck a good portion of the air out of the bleeder before we install it in the motorcycle. This just helps to pump up the lifters before we actually start the bike up and possibly have air. So now while that's doing that, I will clean up my oil pump, take a look at it, make sure I don't have any score marks or anything going on that would worry me for oil pressure concerns. Everything clean. Place our seal on the back of our oil pump. Install our lifters. Once you get um, a new camshaft, uh, if you've got any type of mileage on it, they uh, start wearing together. So when you replace one, you want to replace the other one. It just makes sense so that way everything has a nice uh, even wear pattern and there's not like an old lifter wearing into a new cam or a new cam wearing into old lifters. Those in for you? Yeah, dude. Alright. New o rings we're putting in here. Whenever we do any um, any job ever, not just engines, if it's got a seal or an o ring or a gasket, they always get replaced. Get everything nice and lubricated before install. We don't want any parts to be dry because that can cause premature wear on components. We don't want that. Now we have all of our big main components in there. I like to just squirt a little bit more oil in there. O-ring behind our cam plate in there. Get all the oil off of our bolts. Blue Loctite on all the fasteners. Just a little dab, you don't need very much in there. Let's get everything so that way it's snug, not tight, but just to where everything's touching almost. Screws one and two. 12 to 60 inch pounds. Get our torque wrench set to 60. Torque one and two. Two, and then rotate crank one full revolution. Make sure it's in gear. Get 
and we are going to torque 3 through 8 at 120. And then tighten four oil pump screws, one, two, nine, and ten to 120. So we're gonna go one, two, nine, ten, and then I like to just rotate it again. And just go through and check all of our fasteners to make sure they're all at 120. Make sure we didn't forget any or now we can do our cam and crank gear alignment. I like to just start out with the stock spacer for this. We're literally just making sure that our cam and our crank gear are within uh, the Milwaukee 8s or 9 thousandths. So. And just use the old, old um, bolts for this. Torque them to 15 foot pounds, so we can check our alignment, and then we will put in some new bolts after. So now we're just gonna take our straight edge here and go up to the top to the cam gear and you can see I can fit this feeler gauge underneath there so we need to space it out just a little bit. So this has a 110 spacer in it so we're going to put a 120 in it and it tells you which one which spacer it is by the 0 .110 we're going to put a 120 in it. So now I can't fit my feeler gauge behind there, so we're less than nine thousandths, which is within spec. So now we'll take both off, both these gears off and put some new bolts in there and the chain on them. Gears timed here. Put a little bit of oil on the uh, head of the bolt and on the washers. Speckle, special torque sequence. We're going to go 15 foot pounds on both of the bolts. Then we're going to loosen the bolts one full turn. Then the cam gear gets torqued to 34 foot pounds. And the crank gear gets torqued to 24 foot pounds. So um, with your cam timed the rear cylinders on top dead center compression so we're going to do the rear first rear uh, intake and they say which one's which so this is an intake they don't matter front to rear but intake and exhaust are different so make sure we get that correct get this set to zero lash no up or down play is pretty much as tight as you can get it with your fingers then once you have it set to zero lash we're going to go two and a half turns there's a little mark on the uh on the
push up our jam nut. The top and bottom. We've got a good snug. Wait for that to bleed off. Same thing, get it tight with your fingers. And two and a half turns. Two. Once you can spin it freely with your fingers and it's bled off, so our intake is bled off. With new lifters, usually doesn't take too long to get them to bleed off, but sometimes they do take a while. And then we're gonna rotate our motor so that way our front, we can put in our front push rods on top dead center compression. And to do that, um, I just like to leave the cam cover off and verify that once my uh, crank gear, the time is on 12 o'clock, so is my cam gear. We'll be on 12 o'clock and then that will indicate that I am at top dead center compression for the front.